Hi, this is Ram with Better Tattooing, and we're going to be doing some more coil machine science. Let's talk about the timing spring or the front spring on your coil machine. All right, now that's over with the timing spring. Maybe people call this something different, but then I said in the last video, um, nomenclature is going to be dependent on where you are. I don't know where I am and how I learned the front spring is the timing spring. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. These springs normally don't come flat. <laughs> They're going to have a shape that's usually going to be wedged, a little notch in it, or maybe there's a hole and the thickness length, uh, even the taper where we're going to have for our, our theta coming off of the the a bar joint uh, on the rear spring is going to influence exactly how quickly that that machine can run right the timing machine serves two purposes like one it's the point of contact with our contact that is actually going to be closing the circuit enabling that machine to re-energize and fire again right so that, that's really important to note is that that location of wherever our contact is going to be on here, the grade and quality of the materials, et cetera, et cetera, can improve or decrease the actual performance of the machine, which is why we usually just use black steel springs, right? Work really well. Um, conductivity can just be kind of a constant, right? The point like it's going to hit here, it energizes through that bar and it actually attaches to the back post. So that whole machine is just energized, which is kind of cool. Anyways. Let's get into this stuff here. Um, the first thing to note is that this, this theta value, wherever our angle is gonna be coming off of this, is gonna influence the, the way that the machine runs because the actual deflection value off of the contact is gonna change. The more that this contact is either gonna have to turn or adjust to meet, right, each one of these, is going to have a different value of that actual deflection, the, the amount of force that it's able to impart back on it. The straighter that the contact is in relation to that, that timing spring, the quicker that it should run. Because there's actually going to be less flex and deflection coming off of it. It's, it's hitting it straight down, forcing that spring to bend, and then just return back down. If there's a bit of a deflection on this, it's going to be able to almost like waveform out, displacing some of the actual energy and pushing it back into that contact as opposed to just keeping it straight down on where that spring is, right? Um, and that's the first thing to note, like when, you, when you're trying to tune up your machines, a lot of people just focus on that rear spring and they just kind of tighten it up by bringing it up. Now, that usually happens because that front spring is either worn, we can get pox and holes that'll actually start to form in these things, or it's actually started to break down your contact, wear it down, right? Because there's small arcing that's gonna occur, little bits of lightning, right? That are gonna occur between these two points as that machine is running. And as it does, it heats it up and it causes it to break down. So even if you're adjusting your rear spring, you should always be taking a look at your front spring as well because you're wanting those to work in unison. If you have a very strong rear spring that has a large amount of uptick with it, having a great amount of actual flex on the, the front spring and your timing is gonna actually slow down that machine, right? It's gonna have to travel a longer distance. Now usually people will do something like this if they have an oversized machine, maybe that top post is set really, really, really high and you've got some weird setup with your coils underneath that just that doesn't really you know, work, I guess, that well. But the goal is to try and have this match half of whatever that value is between the top post, the rear post, and where your armature bar is, right? We can set it to neutral. So we know our angle is gonna be X off this, rear post to this on the bottom of that, wherever that A bar is, right? We have a theta value of like A. If we can cut that point directly in half, that's realistically where the tips of our uh, timing spring should be just as a, as a rough cause. I mean, from that point, you can bring it up or bring it down if you want to make them run faster or slower, but it's just the easiest way to do that. Now, normally when you buy these stock, um, like right, right from the shop, sometimes they'll have bends on them, sometimes they won't. And if it's branded, they're usually going to have a set value of whatever that is based on their specific frame geometries that they utilize, right? It's just going to be easier plug and play type stuff. If you do have to bend them, you have to try to make sure that it's, it's not just like 
bent all wonky. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people just, what they'll do is they'll screw it down to the A-bar and they'll stick a screwdriver underneath it, like wedge it underneath where that, that spring is in the, in the top of the A-bar and then they just lift. And when they do that, the springs have a tendency to like bend all weird. They'll be a little bit crooked, even if you're coming down to like wherever, the, it's just nasty. So usually you're gonna need, if you wanna do this right, you're gonna have to grab something that's flat and wider than the actual spring stock. So if you do have like a screwdriver that has an extremely broad flat head that is even wider than the A-bar that you're working on, that can work very well. If not, take the edge of your, your tool chest, your stand, whatever you're working on, and just slip it over top of that. Even a Mayo stand works. And just push down on the back of that rear post until it starts to lift that, that spring up. And just do it gently as it's going, right? Um, if you want to take it off of the, ma the actual machine when you're doing it, you can do that as well. But I'm usually pretty pressed for time so I try to do everything just as it's set up because well, I'm kind of fucking lazy anyways um, so yeah that's it uh, timing spring is really 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 important uh, and there's even more that we can get into this but since this is the intro class there's a buffer when you're doing your tuning make sure you don't bend it pay attention to the quality of that thing especially if it's been on the front make sure there's no pitting and and smart and scarring and all that other stuff from actual operation and if uh, need be needs be you have to do uh, a re-spring for the entire machine. Set that thing up halfway of that value and distance between your rear post and your top post difference off the A-bar. That's it. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.